In the affluent Miami enclave of Blue Bay, a man who looks attractive to the female students is walking through a function room. Mr. Sam Lombardo, a high school guidance counselor, is conducting a seminar to discuss all types of sex crimes with their guests from the Blue Bay Police Department, Detective Ray Duquette, and Detective Gloria Perez. When the cops have their turn to talk, a student named Susie Toller walks out. Ray busted her last year for possession, and the poor girl did six months in Camp 9. In the boat parking area where the school cheerleaders are practicing, after having a sailing lesson, Sam, together with his trainee Jimmy, arrives and notices the cheerleaders looking at him. While washing their boat, a wealthy student named Kelly Van Ryan approaches them, asking if she can join them. She offers to also wash his Jeep, to which he agrees, and they make a deal. Kelly asks Sam for a ride to her house, and he agrees, but Jimmy comes along too. On their way, they pass by Susie, who is fixing her car, and invite her to join them, but she ignores the invitation. Before entering the house, Kelly is seen opening the gate. When they arrive, Kelly's mother, real estate billionaire Sandra Van Ryan, alluringly invites Sam to have a drink, which he declines, making Kelly jealous. The next day, Kelly, together with her friend Nicole, arrives at Sam's house to fulfill their deal to clean his Jeep, but only after the Mercedes leaves. A while later, Sam's girlfriend Barbara Baxter shows up and suspiciously leaves immediately. The girls begin to wash his Jeep, playing as they work. After they finally finish, Sam is delighted and amazed by their work. However, there are some things to exchange. They demand a coupon for the work they have done, so he goes into his house to get it. After letting Nicole leave, Kelly follows Sam into his house to seduce him. Later, Kelly exits the house feeling disappointed and quickly runs away. At Sandra's house, while having fun, she receives a call from the school informing her that her daughter was absent. She immediately calls Sam to ask about Kelly, but he knows nothing. She then finds Kelly outside her house playing with a gun. It traces in her eyes her disappointment. When she asks what's the matter, she admits that she's been abused. Kelly accuses her high school guidance counselor, Sam Lombardo, of raping her, shocking her mother. After hearing this, they immediately go to the police to file a legal complaint against Sam. There, Kelly recounts all the events, including how Sam took advantage of her womanhood. She felt powerless and could do nothing but let those things happen, unable to defend herself. She can't forget the line he said to her, no little girl can ever make me come, which makes their boss, Bryce Hunter, doubtful due to the lack of physical evidence. Gloria also thinks she's acting, but Ray believes her. At his house, someone throws a message related to Kelly's accusations at him. Later, his friend and co-worker Art Maddox approaches him to inform him about Kelly's complaint, which Jimmy already told him about. With Sandra's connections, she's pushing for Sam's suspension, even without hearing his side or considering his insistence on his innocence. Art advises him that he needs an attorney to defend himself against the powerful Van Ryan family in court. The next day, he goes to a law office where he meets Kenneth Bowden. They discuss his relationship with the accuser, and Ken assures him that there's nothing to worry about. After that, he goes to a restaurant to meet Barbara, but unfortunately, her father, Tom Baxter, who works for the Van Ryans, arrives. He tries to persuade Barbara, but she is disappointed in him. Tom warns him that he is finished. That night, while going home, a rover tries to catch him, causing him to fall into a lake. The driver, named Frankie, Sandra's boyfriend, approaches to assault him. Kenneth silently visits his house, surprising him. They discuss Sandra's deep pockets, and he is considering risking his house for some sort of equity loan. However, Sandra has a connection at the bank. Kenneth has a solution for this. The cops visit the Everglades, where they are greeted by Ruby, with the cops claiming that Susie called them. Upon arriving at Susie's home, she asks if Lombardo was arrested, but he is still free. She needs to go outside, where she reveals that a year ago, she was also taken advantage of. She accuses Sam of a similar charge, citing that he also said something similar first, no little bitch can ever make me come. This leads to him being detained in jail, insisting on his innocence. On the day of the trial, Sam and his lawyer attend. Kelly gives her testimony, her lawyer questions her, and she recounts the whole event, much to Sam's dismay. In a second twist, it is Susie who takes the plunge. During cross-examination, under Kenneth's questioning, Susie confesses. She says that her accusation against Mr. Lombardo is absurd. Susie explains that she and Kelly made up the fraudulent claims to exact revenge on Sam, Susie for failing to get her out of jail on a minor drug charge, and Kelly for his romance with her mother, 
real estate billionaire Sandra Van Ryan. This revelation leaves Kelly furious, and they walk out of court on the losing end. Kenneth happily tells Sam that they can get money from the Van Ryans for ruining his life, and they will beg for a settlement. Later, Baxter talks to Kenneth to negotiate the settlement. At the law office, both camps meet, and following the agreement, Sam and Kenneth reach an $8.5 million settlement for defamation, which Sandra pays out with monies. At the school, while he is packing up his things, a furious Kelly approaches him, citing that it's her money from a trust which she will only get after Sandra's death. Because of her anger, she attacks Sam violently until her classmates pull her away. The night after the payout, he goes home. He is surprised by Kelly appearing from the bathroom asking him how much money he got. Instead, they decide to celebrate. As they begin to have fun, Susie arrives to join them. It is discovered that Sam and the two girls were collaborators who used the trial to extort money from Sandra. They begin to have fun, and as things get steamy, they engage in entertaining each other. Ray Duquette, a police detective, is tracing Lombardo's bank account and feels that the three planned a swindle to get Sandra's money. Despite the requests of the district attorney's office, he continues to investigate Sam. He first talks to Kelly, warning her that he knows they all met in the same house, but Kelly remains silent. He then goes to talk to Susie, informing both Kelly and Susie that Sam has already transferred the money to an offshore account. He expresses his suspicion that Sam and Kelly might not split Susie's money and threatens her. Susie panics and runs to Kelly, who consoles her, while Ray watches. Kelly then phones Sam and informs him that they may need to get rid of Susie. Meanwhile, Ray talks to the girls, advising them to be careful with their actions, especially around detectives. Susie attacks Kelly, and Kelly fights back. In the struggle, Kelly tries to drown Susie, until she becomes weak and has no strength left to fight. Trying to comfort her, they eventually kiss and engage in further intimate activities, while Ray unknowingly watches them. Because of this, Hunter confronts Ray for trespassing on Van Ryan property, but Ray insists that he needs to investigate the three. A few nights later, the two girls arrive at the beach, where Susie lies down. When Sam arrives, he orders Kelly to get a blanket while he takes Susie for a walk. Afterward, Sam bludgeons Susie to the point of losing breath, with Kelly nearby. The two then drive to the marsh, where Sam discards Susie's plastic-wrapped body. Ray and his partner, Detective Gloria Perez, are investigating Susie's disappearance. Her blood and teeth were discovered near the beach, and her car was found abandoned at a bus terminal. Despite the district attorney's office insisting that Ray drop the case, he asks Gloria to keep an eye on Sam. That evening, Kelly calls Sam, expressing her desire to see him and how much she misses him. Kelly is worried about what might happen, and Sam comforts her. Later, Gloria enters his house. Sam shows Gloria Kelly's school files, which suggests she is disturbed and violent. Meanwhile, Ray travels to the Van Ryan's guest house to confront the terrified and upset Kelly, but they end up shooting each other. Sandra rushes over as Ray stumbles out of the house, suffering from a gunshot wound to the shoulder, while Kelly is found dead from two wounds to the chest. Ray claims he was forced to shoot Kelly in self-defense. He faces no charges but is fired for defying orders. On the beach, Sam returns to his room and notices Ray in the bathroom. It is revealed that Sam is colluding with Ray. Although Sam is upset that Ray killed Kelly instead of just framing her for Susie's murder, he acknowledges that they now have fewer loose ends to tie up. The two go sailing on Sam's yacht, where Sam tries to get rid of Ray. When Ray fights back, someone shoots him with a spear gun, Susie, who orchestrated her own murder with Sam. Susie confesses that she plotted to eliminate Ray to avenge the murder of her best friend, Davy, whom Ray wrongfully shot and framed as a self-defense shooting. Ruby explains to Gloria what happened that day, Davy tried to intervene to protect a prostitute that Ray was roughing up, so Ray killed him, then busted Susie for drugs and sent her away to a correctional facility so she couldn't be a witness against him. Sam reluctantly accepts a drink from Susie, who tells him she will not deceive him. However, after drinking it, he realizes she has poisoned it. Susie knocks him overboard and sails into the sunset. The untold events reveal that Susie was the ultimate mastermind of the plot. After discovering Sam and Kelly's mutual connection, Susie blackmailed Sam with images of them using substances while having fun, persuading him to join her scheme. Susie arranged a meeting between Sam and Ray at a local bar. She manipulated all the characters in the plot, making Sam seem the mastermind and faking her own death. During their struggle, Ray shot Kelly first, then shot himself in the shoulder to make it appear he killed her in self-defense. Susie devised the plan, 
in which she wished to receive the money from the trial, as payback to her wealthy stepsister Sandra Van Ryan for being scorned and abandoned by their father. After Kelly, Ray, and Sam were eliminated, Kenneth approached Susie and handed her a briefcase full of cash, characterizing it as just walking around money, and a check for millions of dollars. Before she leaves, he tells her to be good and takes her drink. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.